Hello. Hello. What? <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Patriot Pride. The Jay County winter sports season has been moving right along. Thanks to the mild weathering conditions, there's been no rescheduling so far. That's always good. That can be a nightmare, like calling schools and referees and then rescheduling games. Like and you might not get your games rescheduled either. You might. It, just... It's almost a process. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It just needs yep. to be sunny and be warm. But our awesome athletic director does a great job here at Jay County. But sadly, he'll be retiring at the end of the year. Yeah, bro. We're going to miss Mr. Lutton, here. I know. Our, our, go ahead. Go ahead. Our nope. Jay County crew caught up with Mr. Lutton recently to talk about his jobs and plans beyond all the hours he spends here at the school. Okay, this is 36 years. I just finished uh, as a teacher and an administrator. And uh, that is a long time. And what you will find is everything from technology and I think uh, when you look at education a lot of it has not changed um, as far as the teaching, teaching styles, methods, testing, things of that sort has changed but um, you know when you look at I think that one of the biggest changes we have is with the technology when you look at the computers and the, uh, all the technology that you have and uh, the resources that the schools have today I think is a big change and, and the, one of the most major changes that I've experienced over the last 36 years. We didn't have all the computer labs and all the technology back in 1977 when, when I started. So, and the, the regulations, the testing from the state and the different things, uh, those are, a lot of that's different. Discipline has changed, you know, I, I come from Back in the days when, you know, when I went to school, you know, we still had uh, corporal punishment. And when I started teaching in 77, we did. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, rules and uh, things like that and have changed. But a lot of the, the parent involvement still there, the different things of that sort. But, yes, um, discipline has changed a lot. My plans will be is to continue to stay active. I want to stay, uh, I'd like to travel a little bit. Uh, of course, you can't travel around the world. That's pretty expensive. But uh, we'd like to spend a little bit of time in Florida and, and at our lake cottage. And um, you know, I have a granddaughter in Florida. We'd like to get down there uh, occasionally and, and just see some more of the country. Uh, stay involved. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, have some side jobs or some things that uh, I can do on my schedule when I want to. Yeah. That's that's what I'm I'm looking forward to. But. Uh, um, I'm not saying what I'm going to do right now, but I'm going to stay busy and I'm going to go to Grace College and watch you play basketball. Uh, we have a cottage in Warsaw, so I'll be, uh, I'll be able to go up in Warsaw and watch you play. I, I think as you look, and you've got the camera on me now, but if you look, the scheduling part of it, putting things together, uh, you know, being a part of the tournaments, being a part of our kids and our successes. and and just when you host a, a sectional wrestling or a regional wrestling and a swimming sectionals and, the, and all the different things that we do here and watch those things pull together at the, at the end, uh, that's rewarding. Watching our kids go out and compete and, and participate and involvement in the things, just being involved, being around the, the kids, the community, uh, those are all rewarding to me, you know, and, and just watching the soccer matches or the, the contest, the, the tennis, and just watching young people go out and give it their best is rewarding to me. There's so many memories, you know, when you look at it, you, you just think that, you know, it's been fun. Education is a great career. I would, in, you know, I, I would advise anyone or suggest anyone. It's, it's a good career and it's been fantastic to me, but I, I've had experiences and they've all been, uh, for the most part, rewarding and, and fun and, and just a lot of memories and that, those are the things that I can take with me. Thanks for all you do, Mr. Lutton. You will be greatly missed. It's going to be sad. Yeah. I'll miss you. I mean, but like, we're not going to be here, so. Yeah, technically. Technically, we're like both leaving, I guess. Yeah, so. Bye, Mr. Lutton. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Last Saturday, Jay County Wrestling hosted regionals and the team placed sixth out of 19 teams. Eric Hemelgarn and Kyle Garner. 
came out of the weekend as a regional championship champion, so congratulations to you two. And last year, Himmelgarden lost his regional championship match before going on to finish third at state. Eric is now, Eric is now ranked fifth in the heavyweight division and seemed to breeze through his regional matchups. Also, Kyle Geringer is ranked fourth in the 195 pound weight class and pinned his way to the finals. He has been in the regional finals two different times, but unfortunately he lost both. So it is definitely nice for Himmelgarn and Geringer to get some revenge at the regional. Yes, congratulations to you two. Congrats, You do awesome at state. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense, but you know what I mean. Donnie Miller narrowly missed a semi-state berth, dropping his first match 1-0. Connor Ray finished at fourth place, so he'll be wrestling a number ranked wrestler at this weekend's semi-state. So, Good luck, Good luck to all the Patriot our wrestlers. Patriots. I'm Corey Bellis. I'm here with Eric Kimmelgarn. I'm here to ask him how he did at regionals this weekend. So how'd you do? Did you have any close matches? Um, the first match lasted 44 seconds. The second match, I pinned him in the first period. And then the third match lasted 4 minutes, 20 seconds. And I was champion. You were the champion. So do you have? did you have any competition whatsoever? Well, I mean, you can say the last guy was, but he didn't really do anything. Sword made me frustrated. And how do you plan to do at semi-state? I plan to get first to semi-state. And do you know who you have first round? I have the kid from Peru who I wrestled at the Twin Lakes Invitational who I already beat. And then if I win, I have a kid from Central Noble. And then probably in the semifinal round, I have a kid from Goshen who's pretty decent, but I should be able to win the whole thing. And do you know who's your biggest competition there? Um, it'll probably be Drake to meet from East Noble. I wrestled him at the Garrett Invitational earlier this year. I beat him 1-0, to zero, but this time I played on uh, pitting him, so we'll find out. Well, good luck to you. Well, our Lady Patriot basketball team played a really tough Homestead team in the Homestead sectionals Tuesday night. They did. Yeah. Uh, the Spartans held the Lady Patriots down as they dropped their opponent opener, their opener, 80 to 36. Homestead is one of the highest scoring teams in the state, and it was a struggle for the Patriots to keep them from scoring. Homestead is always good. I mean, they are always ready to go. It seems like every sport they're really good. But oh yeah. Okay, though. It happens. But Jay County finished the season with an 8 and 13 record. But they're a young team, and all and every single one of their players will be back next year. Yeah, I mean, that's. I, I mean, that's the plus. So I guess this year is like their building year. Yeah, they got some experience now. They'll come back. They'll be a lot better yep. next year. They'll have a bunch of seniors. Mm -hmm. Our boys basketball team is heading down to their last couple of weeks of regular season play. Sad. It's sad. sad. Uh, well, we hosted Eastbrook Friday and came away with a big win with a final score of 67 to 31. After a bad start defensively, the Patriots only scored only allowed six points in the second half. I scored a season high 29 points, and Scott Sweeterman also added 18. So good game, Scott. Nice job. Good job, Brock. Thank you. <laughs> Saturday night, the home crowd was treated to another win over rival Yorktown. The Patriots had their first close game in a while. They were down. One at halftime before rallying back to win 50 to 34. The Patriots only allowed eight points in the second half. McFarland finished with 18 points and Sweeterman had 13. Patriots are 15 and two and with the 47 points this past weekend, Brock, you are only 70 points away. I don't want to think about it. From breaking that all-time scoring record. I don't want to talk about it. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, it's a good feeling, but I just don't want to. I don't want to try thinking about it. It's just, if it happens, it happens. So. so, it's always like a good attitude to have. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. If it happens, it happens. But, but just letting so you know, at the pace you're going, you are definitely going to be number one in the next four or five games. I hope so, unless something crazy I mean, happens. <laughs> but, just got to play the game. Yep. I'd rather get the W's. But, all right, well, the Patriots, are, we're now ranked 18th in the latest 4A pool. I didn't know that. Ooh. <laughs> they, we lead the state in defensive average at 34.65, and we're on record to we're on pace to break our record from last year, which that would be pretty neat. So that's always nice. Keep playing good defense, we'll be okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's always a good feeling breaking a record. Yeah, that's not bad, especially because everybody thought it was crazy that we broke it last year, and we're might again this year. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. The girls had their swimming sectionals this weekend. Jay County girls had a close meet. They placed second out of 10 teams, finishing with 375 points. Caitlin Kerrigan, a senior from Central, was seated second in the 50 freestyle, but won the finals with a 25.37.
She was the only swimmer who won an event who wasn't in top speed based on Thursday's preliminaries. So. Mm. That went along with Rawson winning the 200 IM and the 100 butterfly. And the 200 freestyle relay win helped the Bearcats to their third consecutive sectional championship, beating out Jay County by only 11 points. So it was close. No and we biter. put up a fight. Yeah, we put up a fight. Yep. Although Jay County didn't get the sectional title, they had some great swims winning over half of the events. Jay County girls took the 200 medley relay and Warren Moore, Sophie Bader, Caitlin Mark, and Katie Smeltzer. Sophie Bader crushed her competition in both the 200 and 500 freestyle, winning by over 20 seconds in the 500. And Bornmore, who won both her individual events in the 100 free and 100 back. Both girls broke sectional records in both of their events. Our freshmen for swimming are so good. Yeah, we are going to have a really good yes. swimming team in the next couple years. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, you get a couple years under their belt, they're going to be whooping everybody. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like you guys aren't now. You guys are oh, doing yeah. great now. You guys are doing but great. But we're just you know, looking <laughs> a few years ahead. Yes, we definitely. I'm looking to see some state runners, some state mm -hmm. qualifying people pretty soon. So. Yep. But Jay County also took the final event, the 400 freestyle relay with Ann Bormore. Ashley Mark, Sophie Bader, and Katie Smeltzer. So awesome. good job to the girls swim team. Good job. Had a good year. But the boys team, the boys swim team won their 11th straight dual meet Monday night, closing out the regular season at the Muncie South Pool with a final score of 119 to 56. James Keene took the 200 freestyle in one minute, 57.63 57 seconds, and the 100 free in 53.53. Hmm. Awesome. Josh Likens led with a pair of wins in the 100 back and the 200 IM. Highlight of the senior night. Highlight of this night was senior Willie Skyver picking up his first win of the season, season edging out his opponent by five hundredths of a second in the 50 yard freestyle. So that's congratulations, cool. Willie. Heck yeah, that's pretty cool. So good job, boys. And good luck in the prelims. Yeah, good luck to yeah. good luck to everyone in the prelims. Um at the sectional finals this Saturday. So yes, yeah, sectionals definitely. are this Saturday. Awesome. Yeah, it seems like everyone's doing their sectionals. I know. Good luck to everybody <laughs> then. But our gymnastics team dominated to remain undefeated over Muncie Central and Richmond last Monday. Patriots posted a final 99.125 over the Bearcats, 85.75. So yeah, wow. definitely a big win. And yes. the Red Devils had 84.5. So good job. Good job. Senior Katie Snyder won three events, posting a high 9.2 score on the vault while adding first on the uneven bars and balance beam. Snyder also placed second on the floor exercise and won the all-around with 35.05. So good job, Katie. Good job. Tasia Smith posted third place on the vault floor and bars. She had a 7.625 on the beam. Mallory Houck also scored for the Patriots on every event with a great score of 8.725 on the vault. So good job wow. to all the good job, lady girls. gymnasts. The Pacers are on fire this week. So they are playing good. Yes, they, they are. are. They are the only team to win back-to-back -to, -back to back games this season. Somehow they found the energy to win 88 to 69 on the road against the 76ers Wednesday night. Indiana has won five in a row overall to move to a season best at 23 and two when allowing less than 80 points. That's when if you play defense, you win games. Yep. That's all it comes down to. So they are number one in the Central Division. Go Pacers. <laughs> Good job to the Pacers. Or for the Big Ten, number one Michigan lost to Indiana that was ranked number three. The win moved Indiana to the number one spot and moved Michigan all the way, no, they only moved down to number two. Mm -hmm. But they'll probably match up again sometime this season. But the game was fast, fast paced and it was well played game by both teams. Indiana won 85 to 80 over Michigan. So good job to IU. Go Hoosiers. Great job. We also had Louisville marching over Mar Marquette. Marquette. <laughs> they won the game 70 to 51. Really, they killed them in a very good game for Louisville. Yep. 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 It's all right. It's kind of won 19 points. That's a, that's a decent win. You can't be mad about that. Well, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week for more of the latest sports news from Patriot Pride 365. 365.
Hey, I'm here with Mrs. Mills Paul, and I got a few questions for her. Um, first of all, what made you want to become a counselor? Oh, I didn't always know that I wanted to be a counselor. I majored in sociology in college because I enjoyed the classes, and things just sort of fell into place when I came back here. This is where I went to school myself, so. Hmm. So, what is the hardest part about being a counselor, you'd say? The hardest part for me is, like, knowing that kids may need something that I'm not able to give, or... A lot of times when you guys come ask for schedule changes and we'd really like to be able to tell you yes, we're just not, it's just not the right timing or when we have to upset kids, I guess. That's probably the hardest. Okay. <laughs> so how long did you have to go to school to become a counselor? Six years. It's a master's degree in counseling psychology. It's a pretty long time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how long have you been a counselor here? At this is just my second year. Second year? <laughs> no, it's my oh. 13th year. 13th year? Mm -hmm. Wow. What is the best part you'd say about being a counselor? My favorite part is getting to talk to all kinds of different kids and no two days are ever the same. And getting to work across the hall from Mrs. Simzak. <laughs> She's standing right there telling me to say that. <laughs> this is my 13th year as guidance counselor at Jay County High School. So. All right. And what's the best thing about being a guidance counselor? Probably just getting to come to the school every day, working with the kids. Um, you know, the high school is a great place to work, work with good people in the guidance area. We have great teachers. It's just, it's just a good group of people to work with every day. All right. And what's the most difficult part about being a guidance counselor? Um, just You're just busy all the time. I mean, there's lots of kids that want help or need help, but just finding the time to help everybody and um, and you deal with some difficult situations a lot of days, so, and it can be stressful at times. Watch them closely. Talk, she's mine. Hey, Jay. Our school counselors are great, wouldn't you say? Outstanding. Miss Millspaw's mine. She's pretty good. Mr. Ferguson. Mm. Today is February 8th, 2013. Valentine's Day is less than a week away. It's getting down to crush time. So here are a couple of great gifts from the heart. Right now, during lunch, our choir will be selling singing grams. You can send that special someone a crush for only $2 or a singing gram for $4. See any choir member during lunch now until the 14th. Or get that special someone culinary art selling decorated cookies and suckers. I like suckers. Also, the month of February is National Heart Health Month. One important factor, a rue, the signs of a stroke, face drooping, arms, arm weakness, and speech difficulty. We had another crazy night last night in college ball and our Patriots had a big county rival win last night. So let's get all this information from Cookie and Jed. Hi. <laughs> Thanks guys. Heartbreak is going through our state today with the Hoosiers loss against the fighting Illini. Tyler Griffey made a layup right at the buzzer to beat the Hoosiers 74-72 to last night. This is the fifth straight week that the nation's top-ranked team has lost. In school news, the Jay County Patriots held their own against the Delta Eagles, winning 50-49. to Kagan Comer finished the game with 14 points. And in other school news, the girls' state swim team is scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. with preliminaries in Indy. Three East Central Indiana schools, Central, Jay County, and Yorktown with competitors. Jay County's competitors will be Sophie Bader, Annie Vormore, Ashley Mark, Caitlin Mark, and Katie Smelter. Well, that is all we got, so let's send it back to the Loops. Thanks, Cookie and Jedi, for that wonderful sports report. Good luck to all our girls swimming state. And now let's send it to Barbie with the headlines. This mail will not be delivered on Saturdays. The United States Postal Service estimated that it will save $2 billion annually. The U.S. Postal Service said that most businesses are closed on Saturday, so it will all work out. So if you plan to make a trip to the mailbox, save your time and save yourself from looking like an idiot. Back to you. Talking about all the... <laughs> talking about the... <laughs> <laughs> talking about the mail is always exciting. Now let's send us to Terrace and Sydney with In the News. In other news, a YouTube video went viral this past week. Having over a million hits, this video features a baby sleeping silently one minute and dancing the next. Her father said she could sleep through anything in a car ride, anything but her favorite song. Here's a clip of the video now. Come <laughs> on. 
<laughs> Thanks, girls. Nice magic carpet. The French Club will be going ice skating at Headwaters Park in Fort Wayne on Friday, February 8th. Permission slips can be picked up in the classroom. Now to Audrey with entertainment. Entertain us, Audrey. Comedy starring Jason Bateman. Top Gun is being re-released in 3D and IMAX. Also, Side Effects, a mystery suspense thriller starring Jude Law. Celebrity birthdays today are Seth Green turning 39, best known for shows like Robot Chicken and Family Eye, and also the movie Ted. Also, John William, a film composer, turns 81 today. He composed shows like Lincoln, which was nominated for five awards. Lastly, don't forget to watch the Grammys. They are this Sunday. Now let's send it to Lacey <laughs> with the weather. Today is a high of 35 and low of 18. Saturday is partially sunny, 34 and 29. Sunday is showers, high of 45 and low 37. Monday is cloudy, high of 44 and low of 28. Tuesday is sunny, 39 and 27. Are Emily Pogue, Bryce Hensley, and Alejandro Vasquez. And birthdays this weekend are Thomas Borgadine, Erlina Naylor, and Brandon Hudson Ray. That's all for today, so bye, Jay. Bye.